What is up, guys, and welcome back. Uh, I do apologize, I lost my voice while I was out of town for the weekend, so please bear with me on that, but I have a bit of a rodent problem to solve, and we are here to solve it. Let's get into the ultimate budget mouse shootout. So I'm gonna go ahead and let some B-roll run in the background so you guys can kind of check out some of the technical specs and the, the shape and size of each mouse as we explain how this review came about and what, what I thought about it. So on Amazon.com, I noticed there was a bunch of cheap mice and a, there are a lot of good reviews for these cheap mice. So I was like, well, if they're all under 15 bucks and they have a four star or better review, then I, I'll kind of consider them. So I, I brought it down to these three mice. Uh, they seem to be the most popular uh, and they, are actually decent mice, I will say. Um, so it's going to be a little bit hard for me to give you like an apples to apples comparison uh, compared to a mouse like my Death Adder. You know, for it to be fair, I'd have to use each one for like two years. You know, that's how used I am to my Death Adder. I've been using that mouse for so long. When I pick up any other mouse, it feels a little bit awkward. So I didn't want to just sit and play with each mouse for like months on months on months because this review would come out in about a year or two. So I decided um, I'm going to play a couple days with each one and give my kind of initial thoughts of how I think uh, they feel and how they actually responded. So I, I didn't want to go in and give you a completely subjective opinion, but at the same time, I didn't want to just make this whole review uh, about tech specs and what color the mouse is. You know, I want to actually give you my thoughts on the overall feel and um, what, what I think the mice are maybe good for, what grips and stuff like that. So as you can see in the background, this is my hand size. So if you think this mouse looks big or small in my hand, then, you know, compare my hand size to your hand size. And, uh, anyways, let's get into some of the software that comes with some of these. So starting off with the Shark software, this one is definitely the most feature packed uh, and you could modify just about anything you could think of. Uh, there's a few minor spelling errors in here, but uh, it does not, it's not the end of the world. Um, you could change anything from clicking speed to polling rate to your Y and X axis uh, being on different uh, DPIs. Uh, you could change all of the colors on the mouse. A few of them weren't quite exactly what I thought they should be, but it was at least a decently cool feature. Um, so uh, A plus as far as the software goes, I mean minus some spelling errors, but other than that, super, super useful software. It works really well. Next is the software for the M555. This is pretty plain Jane. I mean, you could change your DPI and some of your buttons. You could assign macros, but as far as that, that's about it. I had three profiles, but it was nothing that really you couldn't change outside of, you know, just the DPI switch on the mouse itself. The only real thing was, you know, like the mouse scroll speed and the polling rate, um, which is basically stuff you can change in Windows. So anyway, not the most useful, but at least it's something. Next is the Cobra software. This is probably the most plain Jane software out of them all. You could reassign the buttons and you could have different profiles, but other than that, it was about it. And this was just some generic software that I downloaded from their website. This wasn't even specifically for this mouse. So, um, yeah, it's, it's there, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend ever using it for anything. Alrighty guys, now I'm going to quickly just go into a subjective side of this review. So I've been using the Death Adder, as I mentioned, for years now. And my hand is just so used to this mouse. It feels great. So going into a, a claw grip mouse like the Cobra, was a little different for me to get used to because I really don't use a claw grip that often. Um, and if anything, I'll use like kind of a hybrid grip where I'm kind of palming the mouse and kind of clawing it at the same time. Uh, but for a claw grip, I can definitely see where it could be pretty comfortable. Uh, I did end up resting my hand kind of in the middle of it, but still feels pretty nice. The scroll wheel is a little bit looser than I would like. Uh, I mean, it has clicks, but they're really easy to spin past. So uh, not a deal breaker, but it is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the clicking on it isn't bad, but it is a little bouncy for my liking, and the, the thumb buttons are in a little bit of a weird spot for my hand, because uh, my thumb is pretty much too fat to fit on this side area. So I, I find myself like almost having to take my pick my thumb up and then hit a button up here on the top, but uh, I think that's enough about that one. Now this mouse is the E-Tech City. Um, this one has a really weird fit, because mainly this angle right here it it's almost like it forces your pinky to sit at this really funky angle and then your ring finger has to sit like this almost uh, it's really hard to describe but I felt like my pinky was basically at a right angle the entire time so to actually grip the thing I felt like I was constantly just like holding on like a cat 
to it. So I think it's because my hand is too big for this mouse, really. Uh, and to be honest, like I, I could grip it like this. Like I could almost grip around the entire thing. So uh, it's not that bad. I think if you had a smaller hand and you use the palm grip, this would be a great mouse for that. But uh, I feel like my fingers are just too long. Like I, I really want to grip it like over on the on the bottom side almost to really get a good grip on it. Uh, the side buttons are in a pretty good position. The mouse wheel and the clickability all feel really nice. So. Uh, it's kind of like a, a smaller version of the Death Adder is almost where I would put it. Uh, but it does have that weird uh, grip on the edge here where your your pinky is almost going to be like bent at this really funky angle. So not bad. Maybe for somebody with a little bit smaller of a hand that would work well. Uh, my personal favorite was the Shark. And it's, uh, again, it's quite a bit like the Death Adder, but uh, it didn't have a weird side to it. So. This side over here, the right side, actually felt pretty nice. Like, it, it felt pretty natural to grip. I mean, maybe a little bit wider, but I think that's honestly just from me using the Death Adder. I'm just used to a different, you know, exact position of my ring finger. But overall, feels really nice. The, the side buttons feel excellent. Um, the scroll wheel and clickability feel excellent. So all around on that side, uh, it feels great. It does have this nice, like, coated, textured side, which is... Really my biggest complaint with the Death Adder is how slick it is on the edges. So this one actually has textures over there to grip and it has the weights in the bottom. So uh, really a good mouse and plus the software on top of all of that, I think that would be my choice in this whole shootout. Um, DPI works well. And overall, I mean, the lighting scheme isn't the greatest as, as we saw, but it's, it's good. It's a good mouse for how cheap it is, you know, and it would really be my recommendation. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for checking out this little mouse shootout. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have used one of these mice, especially if you've had a problem with one. Um, because, like I, I said, I haven't had enough time to really stress test these mice and uh, maybe put them through all the paces. So if you've had any issues, please leave a comment down below. And if you use one of these mice on a day-to-day -day basis, let me know how you like it, how it fits your hand. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will talk to you later.